What's the most spectacular way you've seen someone screw up at work? I used to work in a grocery store, and I had an hour person repeatedly lose my doctor's note stating that I have Reynaud syndrome and couldn't be in the freezer. I got a stack of them from the doc and would have to bring in a new one every few weeks. Finally, I had a department head fax a copy into corporate for me before dropping off yet another copy to our bitch. The next week the our bitch called me into her office and told me I was going to have to put the frozen load for bakery away. I told her I couldn't do it and I had a note on file. She told me she didn't have any paperwork on file for me and that she could make me do anything she wanted to. I called my department manager into the office and told him what she had said. He got corporate on the phone and asked if they had received the copy of my doctor's note detailing the fact that I had Reynaud syndrome and had already previously gotten frostbite at work from being forced to be in the freezer when I wasn't supposed to be. They said they had it and he then told them what our bitch had said. He then handed our bitch the phone. She had to hold the phone about a foot and a half away from her face because they were yelling at her so loud. It was one of the most satisfying days ever working there. She went on leave shortly after that and never came back and the official story was that she was having health problems. Someone bought $100 in lottery tickets then convinced my Dumbus co-worker to give him a refund on the losing ones. I was once a bank teller. One day, a guy comes in to pay off a line of credit that he shares with his son. Apparently, his son is a drug addict and ran the line of credit balance up to dollar sign 10k, maximuming it out. The guy comes in, talks to my fellow teller, pays it off, and signs to close it out. He asked my coworker at least three times that it was closed. She assures him that it is. She is also addicted to her phone and loans most of her attention to it. Guy leaves. Several months later, the same guy comes in enraged with a line of credit bill. He comes to my window and explains the situation. He thought it was closed. It turns out that our bank's policy, not sure of this is universal, is that both he and his son have to sign off to close it out, unless there was some sort of special circumstances that never happened. Judoed another dollar sign 10k, because of course his son isn't going to sign off on closing it out, if he can run up the balance again. He says he is going to sue. I point him in the direction of someone more qualified than me. My manager tells me he has a good case, and will probably beat our corporate bank in court. I'm just a teller. Some days it's good to be on the bottom. Glad it wasn't me that messed it up. I used to work at Popers, this fried chicken chain. It sucked and I eventually quit. A week after I quit the night crew decided they didn't feel like putting the boxes away from a truck shipment. Someone could deal with it next day. Few days later, and several reports of food poisoning later, they got in a load of trouble. Boxes were full of raw chicken. So glad I quit. A grad student was invited into a professor's office for a meeting, and was left alone for a moment. There was a pile of cumulative exams on the professor's desk that had just been graded. These are subject exams for grad students, wickedly difficult, and you need to pass for to continue in the program. This jackass decided he'd take a look at the stack of exams, then upon finding that some of his fellow students did poorly, he took pictures of their grades so he could use them to ridicule them and pass the results around the department. This was a big deal, because numerical grades aren't ever given out for these exams, only pass slash fail, and also it's a pretty big FERPA violation to distribute others personal academic information like that. He was found out almost as soon as he sent the pics around and was dismissed and forbidden from campus immediately. Someone else had to pack up his desk because they were that serious about him never setting foot in the building again. I'm a welfare case worker. A few months ago I got a call from a client wondering what was going on with her case. Read the case comments and found that one of my more intellectual coworkers shut down this case and assessed a 5 year overpayment on this client for her cash aid, basically saying that all the aid she had ever received was fraudulent and she needed to pay it all back. Her reasoning? There was a glitch in the system that made this woman's child show as a resident in a different county rather than following established protocol and calling this woman or ordering a fraud investigation from a literal unit of full-time investigators or anything else that would make sense she went out of her way to make this woman's life hard 
for the record, I called the other county and the worker I spoke with confirmed that the child was no longer a resident. His father had reported to them that the family was moving to our county five years ago and they'd been trying unsuccessfully to update his county residence ever since. Because I caught the phone call, I had to unfuck the case and close out the overpayment. Testing an industrial microwave that had come back as damaged on site. They straight it off by turning it on and running the RF beater over it to check for leakage. The beater immediately maximumed out and they shut it off. Turns out they didn't look it over first and it had a huge hole burned through the side wall of the microwave. Worked in a single story cinder block office with parking spaces out front. There was a big window that overlooked the parking lot. We had an older engineer, early 70s, that worked there. He pulled up one morning in his parking spot and must have gotten the brakes and the gas confused. He drove the car right through the window, taking out some of the wall with it. I can still remember seeing him gripping the steering window with this terrified look in his eyes while he kept slamming on the gas. The car must have gotten stuck on something because it would just lurch forward and the engine would reverend. Luckily he didn't kill anyone. He retired soon after that. Hired a guy with a CDL. He said I've been driving trucks longer than you've been alive kid. When I asked if he was experienced driving a 13 speed dump truck. 30 minutes later my phone rings. Says my truck is broke down. He burnt up the motor not shifting correctly. I show up. I see the truck is smoking. And the fans aren't on. I lost my cool. 35k mistake in your first hour on the job. Nice. I work with premiers in a neonatal IQ. We get morphine in a multi-dose syringe that is good for 24 hours. We generally give doses from it every 4 hours. Every time we dose, we RV to chart the amount in the electronic medical record, calculate a safe dose, draw it up, show it to another nurse along with the calculations, scan that there are a million safety checks. A nurse did exactly none of those things and gave the whole syringe to the baby. Then she ordered another and did it again in 4 hours. And then she did it again 4 hours later. They baby got way more than 3 days worth of morphine in 12 hours. He had to be put on a breathing machine. Somehow, there was a nursing shortage in Pennsylvania at the time. She did not get fired. Guy drops a glove in a deep fryer, sticks his entire hand in it, before realizing it's on and set to 350 degrees F. My current job is a lab technician at a major university, and we had a new guy unplug the small minus 80 degree C freezer full of recombinant DNA, because he wanted to charge his phone. A coworker received a promotion and a large raise. They were told they should thank the CEO as he initiated the entire promotion. My coworker went on a rant about not asking for any of it, so he's not thanking anyone, and it escalated from there. By the end of the day he was fired. My coworker actually turned a promotion into a termination. One of the cops on a base I was stationed at ran his vehicle right into the wing of a jet. He then decided to throw the light bar that had been sheared off into a random dumpster, like it never happened. The idiot was caught immediately. I'm a cashier in a pharmacy. Anyone that works in the medical field knows that patient privacy is super important. When a patient picks up their prescription, we have to scan the receipt of their medication to the computer. This is unique to each individual prescription, so if it does not match, we accidentally grab someone else's medication. It catches mistakes before we make them. The alternative to scanning is typing the recipe number into the computer. This doesn't guarantee a match. Only comparing the number on the receipt with the number on the computer will work if the barcode won't work. One day, while I was on break, someone came in looking for a prescription. The girl covering my post clearly confirmed the date of birth, but grabbed someone else's prescription by mistake. Two people with the same last name were next to each other in the fridge. But, she didn't scan the receipt, so her mistake was not caught. She typed the number she saw on the computer, had the person sign for their medication, and gave them someone else's medication. Not 20 minutes later, the patient calls and tells us that what he received was not intended for him. We of course, apologized, and he came back to get his medication. The sad thing is, once something leaves the store, it cannot be returned. We can dispose it, but we cannot use it for someone else, even if it is sealed. This particular medication cost $4,000, and we had to throw it out. 
this plus the breach of privacy did not stand well, and she was written up for her mistake. She doesn't use cash much anymore, and is confined to packaging.